Hi folks, it's Chuck, Chuck New, here with the Winking Pig Barbecue. And I'm here to introduce the new video series that I'm getting ready to start off on here. And uh, so, what I, you know, the smoker and everything is done sitting here behind me. And so I'm getting ready to move on to the next project. And the next project is going to be a concession sink system. And it's going to involve four sinks and hot water heater, water pump, and it's going to be portable. So I'm going to get things turned around and, and dig into this. There's going to be uh, kind of several little projects all going together that will come in to, to make the finished product. And um, so I'm going to try to make things understandable and kind of go one step at a time as I put these videos together, even though I may actually have multiple projects going at the same time. Uh, for instance, I'm getting ready to do some things here that involve silicone and, um, and some JB Weld. And uh, those are going to take some time, to, some time to dry. But that doesn't mean that I can't move on to another part of the project. Now, that's what, what I'll be doing. And uh, so, stand by, or stay tuned, I should say, and uh, follow along with me. And hopefully we'll, we'll come up with something that's worth watching. Okay, so the other day I went to uh, concessionsinks.com online and I bought myself um, their basic kit, which is four sinks. It has uh, four drain um, drains and stoppers. They go into the bottom of each one of these sinks. The sinks aren't terribly big. But for my purposes, for the most part, all I'm going to have to wash is um, a few knives, some serving spoons, and maybe some cutting boards. I can't foresee having to wash to a whole lot more, uh, at least not to start. Now, and this is the basic sink system, and this is 22 gauge uh, stainless steel. And that's pretty nice heavy duty steel, uh, stainless steel actually. Now, and for about $20 more, and I didn't know this because I originally purchased this off of eBay, but when I went to their site, I actually found you can actually buy a uh, slightly wider sink. And so, for just a few dollars more, you might want to consider that. And that's the reason why I tell you that maybe you want to go to concessionsinks.com and look up their, their uh, what they've got to offer there. Now, you can actually buy their entire kit and not make it anything yourself. However, that's not the route I'm going. I think that I can improve on what they, what their version is. Oh, also, that their, their sink system does come with both uh, a large uh, faucet for the three sinks because you've got to have a wash, you've got to have rinse, and you've got to have a sanitizing sink. And then over here, it's got another smaller faucet for the single sink, which is going to be your hand wash sink. So the first thing that we need to get done here is to install one of these drains into each one of these sinks. So uh, I'll be right back with you. Okay, so the first thing we've got to do is get these uh, drains put into the bottom one of these sinks. And when you get it in the package, for some reason, I don't know why, but it comes with this uh, a piece of paper that's on here. And we don't need that at all. That is trash and can be thrown away. Now, the next thing we've got to do, you see here we've got this uh, actual drain portion that goes down in the sink. And we're going to put a little bead of clear silicone. Now this is kitchen. Uh, this is made by DAP. And this is kitchen, bath, and plumbing silicone. And it's supposed to uh, uh, be crack and stain proof, waterproof, uh, safe for granite and marble. Uh, four hour water ready. I'm not going to be ready for water that quick. Excellent durability and adhesion. Easy water cleanup and low odor. Okay, so 
So we're going to put a bead of this silicone right around the base of this. We don't want to terribly overdo it because a lot of it's going to smush out of there when we put it into the sink. I hope you can see that. There we go. All the way around. And next we're going to pick up one of our sinks here and we're going to set it down in like so. And next, now that silicone is going to kind of hold that up in there. The next thing we're going to do is put us a little bead around this uh, where this rubber uh, gasket goes. Now if we smush a little bit out under, under here, it's not going to hurt anything because nobody's going to see it. It's up under our sink system. So now we're going to put our gasket down and then we're going to screw this down. <coughs> as hand tight as we can get it. Okay, then we're going to kind of look on the inside. We want to make sure that uh, make sure that we get any leftover silicone wiped up off the inside. We don't want it on the inside of our sink. There we go. Now, every time you get silicone out, you're going to wear it. Trust me. I've worked with it enough times to know. There we go, hand tight as it goes. And I'm going to do the same thing to all four of these sinks. So I'm just going to cut off here and we'll come back when we're done with that. Alright, so we've got that all siliconed up on all four of these. And uh, I know you can't see the one that's out of the picture over there. Um, so the next project we're going to do, and this needs to be as or I should say these three sinks right here need to be as lined up and on as flat a surface as possible. Um, by the way, we're done with the silicone for now. So you want to make sure you save your tube because we're going we're gonna to need silicone again in the future, but not right now. So put a screw or a nail or something in the end of your tube there and that will help hold it for a little while. But as I say, we want to make sure these are lined up as, as much as possible and also we need to be on as flat a surface as possible. That's the reason why I got this table out here and then of course I put this up underneath it just to keep, uh, keep from getting uh, like silicone and whatnot on, top, on, the on the tabletop, which I still managed to get some on there which I need to wipe off. So. I'll be right back with you here. Now and I went to my local big box store and I went and bought some of this uh, kind of angle iron stuff here. It's not very heavy gauge or anything like that. But what we want to do, we want to turn these three sinks into a single unit. <clears throat> now this is stainless steel. And I don't have any means of welding stainless steel. So we're getting ready to do the next best thing. And so stick with me here. Um, and first of all, let me tell you, we want to make sure we're lined across the front. And we want to make sure that we're not overlapping these sinks. But we want them right as 
together as possible without overlapping. So, kind of use a straight edge on one edge here, and make sure we're, we're lined up good. Now, so stick with me and I'll show you where we're going with this. Like I said, I can't weld stainless, but we can do the next best thing. And what I got here is a couple tubes of JB Weld. And if you never use JB Weld, it's a epoxy kind of stuff. And once it dries, it is virtually hard as steel. But you mix it all together, mix two tubes or as much as you think you're going to need together here. Now I'm going to go ahead and pretty much just mix up both tubes together. The whole, the whole tube. But I want to make sure I got enough. I don't have any other plans for this JB Weld other than what I'm working on right now. Now there's a fast setting and then there's a, uh, a long setting JB Weld. The long setting is a stronger material once it's actually sets and dries. It, this one actually, this one sets in four to six hours um, and cures in 15 to 24 hours. So pretty much I need, once I do this maneuver or a little process, I need to leave it alone. There, there is two full tubes of JB Weld, and now we gotta mix it up real good. And whatever you mix this on, you can just forget it. It's trash. Uh, or whatever you're going uh, to apply it with. Forget it. It's trash. Now, and I measured these at 17 and a half inches across here. And so I, I cut those, cut that at 17 and a half inches. Um, it, it doesn't have to be exact. And it doesn't even have to be a pretty cut. Uh, as long as as long as you cover your flat surfaces of your sink because that's where we're going to be applying this JB Weld to. And basically what this is going to do is turn our three sinks into a single unit. Which is exactly what we want to do. It doesn't really matter where, as long as long as we're not going to put ourselves in a hole here. I mean, we we want to make sure we're far enough away from the edge, um, so that when we go to set this sink system. It's gonna it's gonna go down in there with no problems. We just want to make sure we're in a straight line side to side here. And one thing good about this angle having these holes is kind of giving to give the uh, JB Weld, something to hold on to here. It doesn't matter which way we turn our angle either. Um, we're not going to be attached, as far as I know, we're not going to be attaching anything to it. Um, there is no foreseeable plan to it. Now, so we're just going to take this piece of angle, 
make sure that, like I said, I measured it 17 and a half inches uh, to, from bend to bend. And uh, we're just gonna push that down into it real good. And let me see if I can get a shot for, for you. But the, uh, the JB Weld is kind of coming up through the uh, holes here. I don't know, maybe you can see that. Let's see if we can get zoomed in a bit. There you go. In fact, I'm going to take a little bit of JB Weld. I'm going to put it uh, with the with the. It's actually a a door jam a door wedge uh, shim, I should say. And uh, I'm going to put a little bit on this side of it. Looks like I got enough extra here. And that's just going to give it. Almost like a a bolt and nut effect a little bit. There you go. So now and that's gonna have to give us something to grab onto on the on this side of the steel as well, or this side of the angle as well. Now, and I'm going to repeat the same process with this other um, piece of angle here. Now this says this is 18.8 uh, stainless steel. That's pretty good quality stainless steel. Um, And it's uh, told you I think it's yeah 22 gauge, which is pretty doggone stout, thick stuff. Um, considering what you're looking at here. And of course, uh, in their videos and whatnot, um, you you can see them on YouTube. Look up uh, uh, concessionsinks.com. You can also look up concession sinks on eBay and find them that way, which is how I found them. Now, I want to take this and put it on there. Now, you want to leave a little room because you do have to do, we do have to do a little uh, uh, screwing onto the bottom of these yet. A little across there like that. That gives us something on this side to bond with. On Second week of August, and somebody's still playing with fireworks. I do live in town. If you watch my, if you watch my uh, smoker build, you know that I got plenty of neighbors. Okay, push that down in there real good like that. And we're going to let it sit. That's all we can do for the do with this for now. So this stuff is trash for for the most part. Alrighty. So basically until tomorrow night, about this time, which is about seven o'clock in the evening. Um, 
Well, actually it does say that it sets in four to six hours. So maybe I guess uh, <laughs> uh, somewhere around midnight I could mess with it. All right, all right folks, the next part of this is going to involve uh, our, well, it has to be drinking water safe because this is going to be our wash water. And you'll see on these buckets it says food safe right on here. Now here where I live we have Menards uh, hardware stores which are kind of like Lowe's and Home Depot. And you can buy these for about four bucks a piece. Now the lids are additional. Um, but we need to have a way to get this water up out of these uh, buckets. Um, and so basically uh, we've got a 12 volt pump and then we're gonna put a we're gonna put a stem down into the bucket like so for have us a way to um, hook the the pump to it and pump it from the bottom of the bucket and so uh, if you can see that or not okay so there we are we're gonna pump it from the bottom of the bucket and uh, this is gonna be how we get this done so what we're gonna do next is that we've got to drill us a hole through the lid here so we've got a way to uh, come up through the through the through the uh, through the lid the lid needs to be on here um, in order to keep the water clean so the only thing that's going to be it is going to have an open spout up here um, and we're probably going to have to drill a very small uh, drain hole or a air vent hole on the opposite side so that as we're drawing water out of the bucket we can displace or we're, displace the water with air and not create a vacuum that the pump has to try to pull against. Okay so I've got three of these buckets and three of these lids. I'm just gonna I got this uh, three quarter inch hole saw and by the way this is uh, this is CPVC not PVC. And there is a difference. And obviously that didn't hold up the holes all at all. Now and this uh, should fit beautifully right down through there. Like so. Being as I've got three buckets and three lids, I need to do it three more times. Now, in some places, my understanding that they require you to have 20% greater gray water capacity than you actually do have um, uh, drinking water capacity. That's not the case here in Indiana, where I live. Um, and I'll show you what I've got going on as far as, here in a little bit, what I've got going on as far as my gray water. So there's the second lid. And there's our third lid, and I should have gone, just gone ahead and drilled my uh, air vent hole over here. So let's go ahead and do now. I did not drill, I did not drill the hole the whole saw through, just the arbor bit through. Now, if you can't find these buckets anywhere else, um, Holy World does sell them for a whole lot bigger price than what I bought them for at Menards. But, uh, and so, you know, that would be a last resort. 
Now this is made by Encore Plastics, it tells me right here. And that's Cambridge, Ohio or Forsyth, Georgia. And it's got a telephone number on here even. 800-336-2673. Uh, that was 800-336-2673. So if you uh, can't find them anywhere else, you might give them a call. And maybe they can hook you up with, uh, with somebody that sells them. Now, and I have snapped that bucket lid all the way down onto the bucket um, because we need to know exactly how far it is to the bottom. And the first thing we're going to do, we're going to put a mark on here. Now, this mark right here is not really our mark. I mean, it is, but it isn't. But, see, right now I've got this uh, CPVC all the way bottomed out. Well, we're going to come up about well, quarter of an inch or so to start. We're going to put another mark right there, like that. Now, maybe we need to come about three eighths here. So we come up about three eighths of an inch. If you don't have, if you've never used, done a lot of PVC work, this is about one of the handiest tools you can find. I don't even know what they call it, but it's a CPV, it's a PVC cutter, and uh, it ratchets down and and it'll cut right through it. You just pull it back open again. There we are, there's one. And we're going to do the same thing two more times. Alright guys, so we got our bucket here and we got our stem to go down in. Now the next thing we need, we got some uh, PVC glue and some PVC cleaner. And we need to clean our... Yeah, just set them over there. And we need to clean our uh, PVC first. Clean it. And then we got what? We got a coupling here. That's a CPVC coupling. We need to run the cleaner on both sides of the coupling. Since we will be gluing to both sides here shortly. And for the time being, we need to pull this sticker off of there too, because that could just be problems in the future. So there's that. And we'll want to make sure we get any glue and everything off of that sticker, off of this fitting. So, but we do need to now glue the uh, coupling onto our stem here. That's glue, even though it's purple. Um, and we're going to go just like that. Now, the next thing we're going to do, we'll take our bucket here. We're going to end up putting our stem, or actually this is uh, another piece of the uh, CPVC, and we're going to clean that too on, on one end here. And we're going to put a little glue on it. Like so. Maybe just a little in the maybe just a little in the joint here to be extra extra safe. And then we're going to glue these together. Now, we're going to put that through. We're going to take our cutter here. And we're going to leave about a half inch, maybe a three quarter inch out of this. About, about half. About a half inch. Of it. About like so. 
Then we're going to clean that too. Somewhere here, in one of my bags of tricks. Now, what we've got here is a is a female, um, a female CV, CPVC connector with a male pi, uh, half inch pipe threads on here. We're going to clean the inside of this. right through the through the lid right there like that and push it down and so now that is stuck all the way through there it's glued now and it's not going to come out and theoretically provided you cut it right and we're, we're on the bottom there we don't want that we want to be a little bit off the bottom so if we're on the bottom, we're just going to cut a quarter inch off of this. One thing good about cutting things a little long, you can always cut a little more off, but you can't, well, in the case of PVC, you can put more back on, but with a coupling, you can add another piece on. So there you are. That's basically going to go down to the bottom of our bucket and draw water all the way from the bottom of the bucket. Now I have one last piece to put on this. We're done with our glue. This should be the only gluing that we have to do in this whole project. So we're done with, with the PVC uh, cleaner and glue. Um, what we need now I've already done the other two. Well, what I got here is a barbed hose fitting. And if I can get it out of here. There we go. Well, we're just going to screw that right on there. And this only has to go one place. That's going to be from here to our water pump. So I pull this off of here. There we go. All tightened down. And it doesn't matter that this has got a little bit of play in it. Um, so that was a uh, just remember that was a three-quarter inch hole saw right there. Half inch CVP or yeah, CPVC. And it's got a little bit of play in there. But that's, it's not of any concern. Uh, I mean if you're really anal, I suppose you could uh, try a 5-8 drill bit and see if that would uh, be perfectly snug. I don't know and I really don't care. But at any rate, so now I've got all three of these buckets taken care of and the sun's going down on me. So it's time to start putting some of this stuff away and provided it's not raining tomorrow, we'll work on it more tomorrow. Stay tuned.